Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WantCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about superheroes or technically superheroes that actually were replaced. No, I'm not talking about scrolls or at least not all the time as there have been instances where even our favourite heroes need to take a little bit of a break. I mean you can only punch so many goons in the face before you start thinking to yourself yeah maybe I do need a little trip down to Butlins or a equally cheap and nasty getaway. So with this in mind I'm Jules, this is WantCulture.com and these are 10 comic book heroes who were secretly replaced. Number 10. Darken as Wolverine Now, Darken wasn't born in the best of circumstances. He was the son of a woman named Itsu, who happened to be the Japanese lover of that silver-clawed minx James Howlett, better known as Wolverine. Unfortunately for Darken, his mother was murdered by the Winter Soldier while he was still in the womb. Owing to the healing factor that he inherited from his father, Darken survived the encounter. But that's not the only thing that Darken and his father have in common, because they also shared the Wolverine moniker. Shortly after the Skrull invasion came to an end, Norman Osborn decided to create an alternate version of the Avengers. Known as the Dark Avengers, Osborn convinced Darken to step into his father's role as Wolverine. Darken agreed and donned the tan and brown suit and became an even grumpier version of Wolvie. He tried and failed to kill Spider-Man. He did, however, destroy the Punisher Frank Castle by cutting Castle up into hundreds of tiny pieces. Don't worry though, because Castle's body was collected by the Man-Thing and sewn back together into a creature known as Franken castle. The Punisher eventually tracked down Darken looking for revenge. After the two got into a bar brawl, Castle shoved a phosphorus grenade into Darken's chest. After that, Darken took a bit of a break for a while. I mean, wouldn't you? Number 9. Dick Grayson as Batman Is there any more successful or popular superhero sidekick than the former boy wonder Dick Grayson? I mean, sure, Crypto the Super Dog has a few things going for him, but we're not here to talk about Crypto, so stop bringing him up, would you? Anyway, Dick Grayson was Batman for a while. After the events of Final Crisis, where Darkseed-ish kills Bruce Wayne, a struggle ensues between Jason Todd and Dick Grayson to see who will become the new Batman. Of course, Dick wins, I mean, he was Nightwing for God's sake, and he takes takes on Bruce's son Damien as the new Robin. Dick ably handles the cape and cowl in Bruce's absence, managing Damien's anger and maintaining a much better romantic life than Bruce ever dreamed of having. Number 8. Doc Ock as Spider-Man Otto Octavius, atomic researcher, nuclear physicist, weird robotic armed supervillain and Peter Parker body snatcher? Yeah, that happened. Quickly though, let's go through the events that led up to Dr. Octopus taking over Peter Parker's body. And buckle up my friends. With his health failing, Octavius takes over a space station from his underwater headquarters. He then uses his Octo satellites to supercharge Earth's greenhouse effect. He then offers to reverse the effects of the global warming in exchange for compliance from all of the world's governments. And it gets more complicated than this. Otto sends Chameleon to the United Nations posing as Al Gore. Swear down. Right, so let's fast forward a little bit here. In a final battle with Spider-Man, Doc Ock uses a modified Octobot to transfer his consciousness from his dying body into Spider-Man's. One side effect that Octavius didn't anticipate was that, along with stealing Peter Parker's web-slinging body, he also absorbed the wall crawler's memories and part of Peter's personality. Personality. After this, Octavius reflected on his life, decided that he'd been quite the dick for most of it, and took on the mantle of Spider-Man as a way of atoning for his former sins. But not without making a few improvements along the way, of course. Number 7. Jean-Paul Valley as Batman In the early 90s, Bruce Wayne suffered a pesky back injury when Bane kind of broke him in two. Bruce found himself paralysed and knew that he would be out of the crime-fighting game for, I don't know, like six months? I mean, this is Batman that we're talking about. He's the John Cena of getting back in shape. But Bruce needed a fill-in to keep all of Gotham's maniac rogues in check during his absence. Now, the obvious choice would have been Dick Grayson, the man who Bruce had trained and raised since he was a boy, instilling in Dick Bruce's rigid code of honor and justice. But he didn't do that. Instead, Bruce decided to go with a brainwashed assassin named John Paul Valley. Valley had been groomed from birth by a group called the Order of Saint Dumas to become their righteous soldier, Azrael. This caused Valley's personality to conflict quite a bit with the stress of donning the cape and cowl. The most significant split between Bruce and Valley came when the latter threw the villain Abattoir to his death, allowing Abattoir's captured and innocent victims to die as well. After that, Valley refused to give up the Batman persona to a now-recovered Bruce. Wayne had to battle and ultimately defeat him in order to take back the Batman identity. Next time, Bruce, maybe just hand the pointy ears over to Robin. 
Number 6. Scott Summers as Captain America Now we all know Scott Summers as the Boy Scout-esque leader of the uncanny X-Men, and really who better to take up the shield if Steve Rogers were to ever perish? Well that's precisely what happens here on a new version of Earth. Reed Richards invents a machine meant to cure the thing of his cursed appearance. The experiment goes wrong and strips Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Captain America of their powers. Regrettably, Steve suffers the worst effects of his failed experiment as he suddenly ages 100 years in a matter of minutes. Horrified by having to watch his ally Rogers suffer this dreadful fate, Scott Summers vows to take over Captain America's duties. Summers opts not to use Rogers' ordinarily red, white, and blue costume. He instead wears a blue, yellow, and white version of Cap's suit along with a yellow shield featuring a white X to keep some of that uncanny X-Men flair. Number 5. Eradicator as Superman The Eradicator is not a person, but actually an ancient Kryptonian artifact built by Superman's ancestor, and the device was built to preserve Kryptonian purity, which sounds as Nazi as you think it is. It's not fun. The Eradicator floated around space for a few hundred thousand years until it came to Superman's possession, who promptly used it to create the Fortress of Solitude. Things went along pretty well for a while, until Superman got straight murked by the giant rock monster-looking guy called called Doomsday. Well, it's a good thing that Superman had that ancient artifact designed to preserve all things Kryptonian then, wasn't it? While Kal-El napped away, the Eradicator took human form to take on Superman's duties. He did pretty much everything that Superman would, except he did it while wearing a pair of yellow-tinted night-driving glasses. He even stopped cyborg Superman from killing the real Superman as Kal-El recuperated. The early 90s was lousy with Superman poses, let me tell you. Number 4. Flash Thompson as Venom If you don't remember Flash Thompson, he was the longtime schoolyard bully who tormented Peter Parker. The irony is that once Parker began swinging from the high-rises, Thompson became the web-slinger's biggest fan. Flash even served in the military, becoming a decorated war hero. In the real world, Marvel decided that they wanted to capitalize on the popularity of Spider-Man's foe Venom. They thought that the best way to do this was to shift the character into an anti-hero role. The only problem was that Eddie Brock had committed some pretty heinous acts during his time with the symbiote, such as trying to kill Peter Parker by pushing him in front of a train. So, writers dusted off old Flash Thompson. In the comic timeline, the Venom symbiote is captured by the US government and housed at the Department of Homeland Security. DHS realizes that they can use the suit to create a new super soldier, so they bond Venom with Flash and order him to complete 20 deadly missions. Flash controls the symbiote through a combination of sedatives and sheer force of will. Unlike Eddie Brock, who lusted for power and and revenge, Flash's only goal is to survive his 20 missions so that he never has to have contact with the Venom symbiote again. He would eventually join the Guardians of the Galaxy though, which is pretty cool. Number 3. Stephanie Brown as Batgirl Stephanie Brown is the daughter of a Batman rogue known as the Clue Master, who is basically a Tesco brand Riddler. Tired of waiting out her dad's long stints in prison, Brown decides to take up a life of crime fighting. Specifically, she decides to spoil all of her father's plans and starts calling herself the Spoiler. She leaves clues to her dad's crimes in hopes that Batman and Robin would catch him. At one point, Brown teams up with Tim Drake and together they capture her father, the Clue Master. Brown starts to patrol the city with Robin and the two become romantically involved. Later, Brown befriends Cassandra Kane, who helps her sharpen her crime-fighting skills. Even later than that, Brown spends time filling in as Robin. However, after the events of Batman R.I.P., Kane passes on the mantle of Batgirl to Brown. Kane does this without any of the Bat family knowledge, and both Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson are shocked to find a new Batgirl roaming the streets at night. After Dick and Barbara discover that it's Brown under the Batgirl cowl, they confront her. In her role, as Oracle, Barbara Gordon demands that Brown give up the Batgirl persona. Brown refuses, and the two come to a deal. Stephanie Brown can continue as Batgirl under Barbara's guidance. Brown even gets a sweet new costume out of the agreement. Nice. Number 2. Amadeus Cho as the Totally Awesome Hulk Amadeus Cho is known as the 8th smartest man in the Marvel Universe. Now, This is no small feat considering that he's competing with the likes of Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom. Cho possesses what is known as a hypermind. This hypermind allows Cho to run limitless calculations in his head like some sort of freaky, brainy, fleshy supercomputer. A Korean-American, Cho grew up idolizing the Hulk. For a hyper-intelligent young boy to worship a hulking green giant whose vocabulary consists of two 
word Hulk and smash in that order seemed pretty strange. But there's an explanation for this. When Cho was a teenager, he ran away from home with an adopted coyote pup named Kirby. Unfortunately, he had a run-in with the law, but the Hulk saved him after a chance encounter. Cho later used his kinship with the Hulk to end World War Hulk and subdue the not-so-jolly green giant. After the Secret Wars events, Cho designed and used nanites to remove the Hulk from Bruce Banner's body. He then placed the Hulk inside his own body and became a new character Cho dubbed Totally Awesome Hulk. In his role as the Hulk, Cho hunted down dangerous monsters around the globe, teamed up with She-Hulk and Spider-Man, and in general was, well, totally awesome. And number one, Victor Von Doom as infamous Iron Man. Doctor Doom is perhaps one of the greatest villains in the Marvel Universe, but there was a time when Victor tried his best to reform and become a hero. But not just any hero though, Doom stepped into the role of none other than Iron Man. After the events of Secret Wars, Doom's face was healed, and he was feeling a lot better about himself. He even decided that it was time to put aside his evil ways. It's incredible what feeling good about yourself can do for you, right? With Tony Stark dead at this point, Doom chose to gift the world another ironclad hero, and so the infamous Iron Man was born. Of course, Doom ran into opposition as none of the other heroes of the Marvel Universe believed for a second that Doom sought atonement, but Doom went on fighting evil and ignoring the haters. He even ran into Tony Stark's hand-picked successor Riri Williams aka Ironheart, and Williams ended up as being one of the few people who believed in Doom. All of this animosity started to get to Doom though, and when Tony Stark was resurrected, it was clear to Doom that his time as Iron Man had come to an end. During a battle with the Hood, Doom's face was newly scarred. After this, Doom fell back into his old habits and returned to a life of evil. So Doom's face was healed and he became a hero, but everyone treated him like crap. Then his face was re-scarred and he broke bad again. There's a lesson in there somewhere, I just can't place what it is. Oh yeah, it's to stop treating people like goddamn assholes. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 comic book heroes who were secretly replaced. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. I hope that you're treating yourself well, my friends, and being an absolute superhero to yourself because you deserve love, happiness, and success. And remember, we are the Big Bat family here at What Culture Comics, so do not think that you are alone in any of your struggles. Reach out, speak to people, be there for others if you have the capacity to. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Big love from me to you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.